It is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank here on the Voice of Indiana County, WCCS AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. And it's time now for an interview segment. Our interviews are presented by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. We've been hearing a lot about scams over the past few weeks. In fact, we heard of one earlier this week where the sheriff's office was mentioned, where people have been pretending to be sheriff's deputies to try to get some money out of some unsuspecting victims. And we're going to take a look at some of the scams that have been, other scams that have been going through our area. And joining us right now in a separate studio so that we remain socially distanced is uh, the Indiana County Sheriff, Bob Fyock, and we also have Robert Manzi, the Indiana County District Attorney, joining us. And gentlemen, thank you very much for being a part of Indiana in the Morning this morning. Thank you, Josh. All right, and uh, let's start with uh, Sheriff Fox. Sheriff, when did you first hear word about these uh, this new phone scam coming through the area? The problem is uh, anymore uh, these things are going out and they attach the law enforcement entity with it. Uh, people get a little bit more concerned that, well, I don't want to break the law here. I'm going to get in trouble if we don't do this. Uh, and the, the sad part is it has the phone number to call into the sheriff's office or other law enforcement agencies, and that makes them more skeptic. But uh, the person identifies themselves. But any time that you have law enforcement uh, involved with warrants or anything, uh, believe me, you'll not get a phone call. Mm-hmm. And you won't be threatened if you don't pay. So I would say probably at least... 98 and 99 percent of all the calls that somebody's calling to ask you for money it's going to be a scam Mm -hmm. and if you have any concerns just uh, say well get a number and i'll call you back and then uh if you if the number didn't show up at least you'll have some kind of a number to make a contact and check it out right and that's actually kind of the big thing i guess bob bansy uh with the uh with with this whole thing is is to make sure that it is a fake thing oh i Absolutely. You see these scams come through in emails, uh, text messages, phone calls, and one of the easiest ways to deal with it is simply to say, let me have a number to call you back or send me something in the mail so that you can take a look into it. There's been so many good people who have lost money to these scams, and when they do lose money to scams, they feel embarrassed, they feel angry. Uh, and they don't really want to share the information. But what we want to do is bring that information out to the entire community because our goal is is that there are no victims to us. We want to deal with it beforehand, before people are victimized, because unfortunately, once you share the Visa gift card number or once you send some sort of money over a money wire or money order, it's gone and there's probably no likelihood of recovering that funds. That's been the M.O. of a lot of these cases with the fact that they're asking for gift cards rather than uh, or, or they're now sometimes asking for a checking account number or something along those lines. And that should be a red flag to some people saying, hey, this may not be on the level if they're asking me for a gift card. Yeah, absolutely. That is a huge indicator. If they're asking for gift cards, if they're asking for your checking account information, if they're asking for money orders, uh, I'd feel pretty safe to say it's a scam. So what are you mentioned some of the things that we have to do, just kind of listen for those things. But there are also quite a number of variants on this telephone scam that's going on out there. I mean, we've heard one variant being uh, the sheriff's department saying there's a warrant out for your arrest. And we'll get back to Sheriff Fock in just a bit. But there's also other variants on this, like we keep hearing about the grandma I'm in trouble case type of thing. Yeah, there, one of the scams is that a person posing as a bail agent will call and say that your grandchild is in trouble and they're going to go to jail, but you can pay money towards a bails bond over using your credit card or, again, providing some of that other information. Uh, meanwhile, the grandchild is at home playing video games and isn't in trouble. So those are situations where... Uh, you know, one, the first thing to do is contact your grandchild, contact that person in your family, uh, see if they're okay. If you have questions, call law enforcement. Law enforcement will certainly share the information and will be looking to, to help. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and even further stepping back is watching what information that you're sharing 
especially on social media, uh, that's where they get a lot of this information from. We, we share so much information online uh, that the scam artists are able to uh, look up your profiles, find out that information, find out where you're at, where your grandchildren are at, where your family members are at, and try to use some of that information as if something uh, truly nefarious is going on. And uh, you just want to be careful with that. And again, you, you just got to trust your gut. If you feel like it's a scam, it's probably a scam. We're talking with Indiana County District Attorney Bob Mancy and Indiana County Sheriff Bob Fiock about a recent scam that has been going through the area that has involved the sheriff's office. Sheriff Fiock, I want to, let's let's clear up some misconceptions. First off, uh, if there is a warrant, you said that if there is a warrant out there, the sheriff's office will not contact you over the phone. If I'm just saying that if there is something for something as small as a parking ticket or anything like that, if there is a warrant out there, does the sheriff's department get a hold of people, uh, and how would they do that? Not usually. If if the thing was a legitimate warrant, uh, we may try to call, but usually we will go to the residence or wherever that uh, location might be, a place of business. Uh, but we try to make physical contact with the individual and let them know that we have a warrant. Mm-hmm. So Sometimes it's- we do ask if we are at the house, uh, is so-and-so here? They say, no, she's not, or no, he's not here right now. Leave a message, or if we're out, we may even put a card on the doorknob or something if nobody's home to please contact our office. We are not calling them, but we want them to call us. Right. And who knows, it could be just a problem at that point that just needs straightened out over the phone or something like that. But again, the sheriff's department, if they have to serve a warrant, they would be they would much rather do it in person rather than over the phone. Exactly. A lot of times if we call and let, the, let these people know that we're looking for them, they, uh, they abscond further and try to stay away from us that much more. Mm-hmm. They'll try to get out, of to get out of town before they get into more trouble. Correct. All right. Um, open to both of you. Have you both seen scams kind of going up during this uh, time when people have been kind of hunkered down in homes, making sure that they're staying safe during this coronavirus time? Have you seen more of these scams come up? I, I can speak for our office and say that I, I don't necessarily know that we've seen the scams increase or decrease, uh, but they certainly changed. Uh, the scam artists are at home. Their job is to find a way to scam you out of money, and they're going to uh, they're going to try whatever's new going on. So there's certainly new scams that are going on because of the uh, COVID virus that's happening. Uh, I know that um, we're seeing new scams I, I don't necessarily know that we're seeing an increase or decrease okay so it's not just so it's not the number but the techniques have changed or the the story changes i'm sure that you probably have heard some coronavirus scams out there oh yeah i mean there's you know now that you have the coronavirus and there's uh, so much information and some better than others out there um you know we're, we're certainly seeing some scams going on in and about that uh, when they had the stimulus checks coming out, we had problems there. Uh, there's scams regarding testing and products. Uh, I know AUSA Scott Brady is doing a fantastic job uh, with his task force looking into uh, COVID-related scams in our county and throughout western Pennsylvania. So, uh, unfortunately, in a time of stress, there are still people that are trying to take advantage. We have talked with uh, the U.S. attorney before, and that's a, maybe a point that we'll follow up with him on, seeing if there's been any sort of uh, increases or changes to what we're seeing out there as far as these scams go. But again, the best piece of advice that uh, if you do receive one of these calls, get a hold of the, lo- of the local law enforcement immediately. Don't wait on it, right? Absolutely. The, the more information that we have, uh, we may be able to share that and protect others from becoming victims. Uh, Simply giving a call to your local law enforcement agency, uh, letting them know what phone call or text message or email you received uh, might save you from losing thousands of dollars uh, just to learn, hey, that's a scam that we're seeing. Don't reply to that email. Don't call that number. Uh, Make sure to protect yourself. Would that information also be used maybe as evidence if you were to catch up with these potential scammers to prosecute? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, unfortunately, a lot of the scam artists in these phone call situations, uh, you know, they're not local, they're outside our area, but we, 
we will share that information with our law enforcement. We share that information with AUSA Scott Brady's office. Uh, you know, our goal is to work together in law enforcement uh, to catch the crooks that are doing this. Sheriff Ock, do you think we need to add anything to uh, what we've been talking about today as far as these scams are concerned? Well, I, I think the main thing, Josh, is the fact that, uh, like uh, Mr. Manzi said, if, if you gut tells you something don't sound right, don't go for it. Uh, we need people to be out and be proactive so we don't have to react to this kind of situation. Uh, mm-hmm. Rather than uh, spending 10 or $15 up front to try to get other information, rather than somebody turning around and losing thousands of dollars, it's worth it. Yeah. And if it takes a couple, couple minutes to get something straight to call law enforcement or some other person that may be in contact with this individual have them make that call to whoever they need to. Uh, We did have the the one incident, the grandmother uh, received a call here. This has been a good while ago, but uh, like Mr. Manzi said about calling the grandson had been arrested, he's in jail. Well, the grandson was sitting in the living room with his grandmother. Wow. And, I mean, these people just don't care. And a lot of this stuff is coming even from out of country rather than just in Indiana County, you just never know where these calls are going to be coming from. Right. And in fact, if you had the number where the call came from on your uh, phone or whatever, save that. Do not delete it. That could be a key bit of information to help prosecute the case. Mr. Mancy, anything else you wanted to add? Uh, I think with regards to the scams, we've touched upon it all. All right. Uh, Bob Manzi and Bob Fyke, thank you both very much for coming in today here on Indiana in the morning to discuss this. And uh, we wish you good luck both in uh, helping people avoid the problem and hopefully you catch one or two of these people. Again, thank you very much for being a part of Indiana in the morning. Sounds good. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh.